Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Hollybrook Akute H7 mini stack. In this video, I'm going to go over the features and specs of this very capable 20 by 20 mm stack and after installing it on a new 6S 3 inch build, head outdoors and test it out. In terms of packaging, here you can see everything that came inside the box. So along with the stack, which is based on an F7 flight controller and the 45 or 50 amperes BLLE32 4-in-1 ESC, depending on the version that you've got, you are getting four empty screws and nuts, rubber grommets, some stickers, a 35 volts 1000 microfarad capacitor, two harnesses in different lengths for connecting the 4-in-1 ESC with the flight controller, 9 and 15 centimeters long harnesses which are used for connecting the flight controller to the DJI Air unit and another 15 centimeters long harness that is used for connecting the flight controller to other types of video transmitters. As for the H7 mini stack, it's using 20 by 20 millimeters M3 mounting holes which are reduced to M2 using the included rubber grommets. On the 4-in-1 ESC, in addition to the 8 pins JST connector that will enable you to connect it directly to the flight controller using the provided harness, you can find matching pads, which is a great backup option in case the connector breaks. On these pretty big battery pads, you can find dedicated holes for inserting a capacitor, and the motor pads can be accessed from both top and bottom sides of the controller. As for the flight controller, it features an F7 processor, an onboard barometer, 5.5 UART ports, a dedicated JST connector that will enable you to connect directly to the DJI Air unit and other types of VTXs, but pay attention that it only features a 5V 2A BC, which means that the VTX is going to be powered directly using the battery voltage. In addition, it also features a physical boot button, all the pads can be accessed from both top and bottom sides of the flight controller and it also features an onboard memory for storing black box data. In terms of weight and dimensions, the 4-in-1 ESC weighs 6.9 grams and its outer dimensions are 30 by 38.4 by 4 millimeters and the flight controller weighs 5.5 grams and its outer dimensions are 30 by 31 by 4.8 millimeters. The next thing that I've done in order to test the H7 mini stack is to assemble it on the Holybro Copis 3 inch frame. The RC in power smokes 1507 2680KV motors are wired to the 4 in 1 ESC. A Crossfire Nano SC receiver is connected to your number 4, and the Vista unit is powered using the battery voltage and connected to your number 1 using this GST connector. Another feature that I didn't mention earlier is that this flight controller features an onboard VTX switch, which means that you'll be able to turn on or off the video transmitter that is connected to the flight controller using an auxiliary channel, which is going to be assigned to user one mode. And in order to take advantage of this feature, you will need to power the video transmitter either using the VTX voltage battery pad or using the JST connector. Now, as you can see, the Vista unit is powered up, and in case I am going to press this switch, which is assigned to user one mode, the Vista unit is going to be turned off. So whenever user one mode is going to be enabled, the video transmitter is going to be turned off, and whenever it is going to be disabled, it is going to be turned on. So overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that the Holybro H7 mini stack definitely packs some very useful features, including the VTX switch option that I've just mentioned, the layout of the flight controller is very convenient to work with, and it could handle this very powerful 6S 3-inch build with no problems. Since according to its specs, it should be able to handle a 5-inch build as well, soon I'm going to push it a little bit farther and feature it in a build and flight video in which I am going to build, fly and test this very unique frame by Uniquad. And the thing that makes this frame unique is the aluminum cage, which should be nearly indestructible, so stay tuned for this upcoming video. As for the downsides of the stack, Unfortunately, the flight controller doesn't feature a 9V voltage regulator, which can be a problem on a 6S build in case you are going to use it in conjunction with the DJI unit, so it will require you to use an external voltage regulator. 
and pay attention that the flight controller must be flashed with the latest Betaflight 4.3 firmware as otherwise you are very likely to experience issues. For example, in my case, when I've tested it with the latest Betaflight 4.2 firmware, I couldn't enable the MSP switch on UART number 1, which was a problem since it was connected to the Vista unit. Anyway, now I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and even though this is one of the most powerful 6S train setup that I've tested, the flight footage is not that good because this build definitely needs a better tune, as you are going to see that there are a lot of vibrations in the flight footage. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye. Thank you.